Greetings and aloha. Good morning, my friends. Good morning from the Big Mango. Happy Friday all over your body. It's Mike from LiveMyAssOff.com. Glad to have you guys along for the ride. Uh, one of the things that I'm going to do today is I'm going to give you kind of a summary of what happened this past week. When I was down in Chumpon, uh, and also uh, talk to you guys a little bit about sort of what I refer to or what I've heard before from my friends, and therefore what I refer to it as, as a learning moment. And the reason that I've heard it referred to that way, a very good friend of mine who's a very, uh, he's worldly. <laughs> he's a leader of a global company. And uh, one of the things that he says about his team, he refers to his team as a tribe, uh, which I think is uh, very appropriate. And, uh, you know, they all have common values and, and similar goals and that sort of thing for the company. And then they have the ones that are like for themselves as an individual. But one of the things that he talks about in his organization is that uh, they don't they don't make mistakes. They have learning moments. Carl, good to see you, my friend. Thank you so much for coming by. I really appreciate it. Hello, Paul. Glad you guys are here, man. Doctor, aloha. Mahalo for coming by. Thank you guys for the thumbs up. I already see. I see two hearts on Facebook, too. Wow, that's pretty awesome. And uh, so I'm back here in Bangkok. Absolutely, Paul. Long time. Long time. When was my last video? Yesterday, about 10 a.m., I think. Uh, when I was down in Chimpon, I stopped by this... Uh, you know, it wasn't spectacular, right? But it was this viewpoint. And it's one of those deals where, you know, you're cruising along the road and you see this. And this happens in the United States. I'm sure it happens in Australia. You guys, you know, you're driving along some scenic road and the government, basically, you know, parks and recreation or the highway department or something has put in what they refer to as a viewpoint. Excuse me, a viewpoint. And a lot of times it's also sort of like a rest stop. It'll have restrooms and, you know, sometimes it'll have vending machines. Sometimes it'll have people actually, you know, selling things, that sort of thing, right? Jim, good to see you, buddy. Thank you for coming by. And MedTech, aloha. So when I was, um, when I was, uh, when I, oh, hey, okay, but gone for four weeks, busy driving. Oh, that's right. I know who you are, Paul. Very cool, man. Thank you for coming by. I really appreciate it. We've missed you. Seriously. So anyway, so I had uh, the opportunity to just sort of stop and smell the roses. A video topic that I've done before, <laughs> encouraging all of you to do the same. But don't forget, like all of the stuff that I encourage others to do, I believe are things that I've done that I've been successful with. Meaning that, hey, I really should, you know, I encourage you to go get a bachelor's degree or I encourage you to apply for this job when you think you can't or I, uh, you know, ask this girl out if you think she's going to say or whatever it is, you know, things that are just like sort of limiting me from forward progress and potentially really enjoying my life. I like to share those stories because I think certainly when I hear stories of other people doing it, well, then I sort of think to myself, well, shoot, if he can do it, I can do it too, right? So in doing so, I always like to take my own advice. <laughs> Appreciate you too, my friend. Appreciate you too. Uh, which is stop and smell the roses. The other thing is that I have shared before on this channel uh, that one of the things I have not done in a while is watched the news. And by that, I mean CNN or um you know, NBC, ABC, CBS, that sort of thing. Stuff from stuff from basically the United States that w w is what I'm used to watching, right? <laughs> um, and so, Dorman, just come to say hi. Watching Sully and Friends live live from the living room. Sully and Friends. I don't know that. Is that like a cartoon or is it a TV show? I apologize. I don't know. It could be another YouTube channel that I don't know of. So I apologize for that. Aloha. How you doing, Captain? Good to see you, my friend. Yo, Patrick. High five. So along the lines of things that I sort of describe that I encourage others to do that I know I should do myself is not watch the news. And yesterday, <laughs> I watched the news. And it was sort of, 
I was on a live stream and I think it was uh, go more hike. He said, Hey, have you heard what's happened in Beirut? And it could have been anybody. It doesn't matter that it was him. But the point is, is that meaning that I'm not going to blame him for my you know behavior at all. But the point is, I think that he was the one who brought it up. And so interestingly enough, when he did that and he could have said, Hey, have you heard what happened in New York? Have you heard what's happened in, you know, Salt Lake city, whatever. And, and, and because of sort of the, probably the cynicism really that I have towards the mainstream media and the news, which is arguably probably too negative, but it's certainly negative, <laughs> um, is that uh, when you mention someplace, I, maybe you don't, assume that something bad happened. So when you say, hey, dude, you hear what happened in Beirut? I wasn't, the, the first thing I thought of wasn't, oh my God, they, they've like discovered a perpetual motion machine and they have like a cure for COVID and they discovered that world peace is available and every single person on the planet can now make $100 a day and live the dream. That is not what I assumed, sadly. And again, you're hearing the sarcasm and the, the facetiousness of my, my topic. And one of the reasons I don't watch the news is because of that assumed negativity, which, again, it could be confirmation bias. And even with, when there's positive news, potentially my mind just says, oh, well, Mike, you told yourself it was going to be negative news. So therefore, even if it is the whole perpetual motion machine thing that's going to save the world, you're going to in, you're going to in, ingest it and, and you're going to label it as negative. Regardless, that is something that I do knowing that I do that. I proactively don't watch the news because it actually has a noticeable effect on me, on my behavior, on my mood, that sort of thing. And anyway, so yesterday I'm in the airport and I'm, and I'm you know, just waiting, basically. And I had gone through sort of the YouTube channels that I regularly follow and uh, didn't really, uh, or caught up on everything and didn't really have anything else to watch. Mr. Mitch, good to see you, buddy. Godsmack Singer, ah, nice. Hello, Max. Rainy, sticky day. Happy chatting. I remember those back in New England, actually. Hazy, hot, and humid. Uh, and then when it would rain, it would be, I mean, there it, it would literally be like 110% humidity, right? I mean, it just really gets, you know, kind of stuff. Now, again, I loved those days. You know, I love hot, humid, that sort of thing. So it was pretty, I would, I would welcome it when that would occur in the summer. Because again, in New England, you only get about, you know, 12 of those days a year. And in Bangkok, you only get 12 of those days that aren't like that. <laughs> it's kind of cloudy today, and I assume it's going to rain. I mean, we're in sort of rainy season, right? There's, there's varying different rainy seasons here in the land of smiles. And uh, Bangkok, interestingly enough, though, doesn't get the intense rain, say, that like Phuket does, meaning they get a lot of heavy rain for like several, several hours, sometimes days in a row, whereas up here, we get really intense rain for... Oh, about an hour. It's 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 very similar to what I've experienced in the summers in Florida, which is it will rain almost every day and it'll rain sometime in the daytime slash mid afternoon and then it will stop and then the sun will come out. Y you know, there's obviously variations of that, but that's sort of a you know, general summary summary. <laughs> and I'm having my three in one this morning. So thank you for joining me for coffee. Ah, uh, Boston. Aha. Good morning, Dumore. How you doing, buddy? I shall have a great stream. You have an amazing day at work. And uh, thank you so much for providing young people with the ability to be wildly successful. Because I always say to young people, you guys are young enough and naive enough to change the world, which means you will. <laughs> so good teachers are the catalyst for that. So thank you so much. Good to see you, Jeremy. Doing interviews and playing music with others that he interviewed during the thing. Ah, OK. That's that sounds like a, a Sully and Friends. Is that what it's called? Let me go back up. Yeah, Celine Friends Live. Cool, man. Awesome. Aloha, Mango. Good to see you, man. Thanks a lot for coming by. TYT and other progressive channels. My dad watches one from, uh, I think, Tokyo. But maybe I just want to say Japan. But let's say for the sake of argument, Tokyo. Um, and it is excellent. They're, they're, they have literally no accent. Their diction is outstanding. They give the news. They give the data. In fact, none of this opinion, you know, or they like give the news story. And then, the, you know, the two anchors afterwards, they talk about, well, you know, Janet, I really don't think that that's a very good idea. Oh, no, Steve, that's going to cause a massive problem based on what analysis. Just read the news. I don't want your opinion. If I wanted your opinion, I would have flipped to that page in The New York Times and read their opinion. But unfortunately, 
as a human, I can completely relate to sharing data and fact and my opinion. <laughs> it's a very easy default setting, and I don't blame anyone for getting into that mode. However, <laughs> uh, when I want the news, I actually really prefer data and fact. And I relish the days of uh, the 80s. At least that was when sort of I started ingesting news. Because before that, it was like, I don't want to watch the news. I want to watch cartoons. But then once that sort of started showing up in like 60 minutes was like something that I would actually in the summer, I would actually come in before the lights came on, before the street lights came on when I was like hanging out with my buddies outside to watch 60 minutes on Sundays, you know, so because that data, in fact, just seemed very interesting. And also the presentation of it was obviously world class. It's the only news show in the history of the universe that's lasted that long. And uh, it's on CBS on Sundays. So. The world is falling apart. Yes, in many areas, it does seem that way. Mr. Mitch says, did you hear about the cheese factory in France that exploded? There was nothing left but debris. I love you like a fat kid loves cake, Mr. Mitch. Very nice. But I'm bummed. See, now I like that. That's that's cool. And so because of that, the next time someone says, well, did you hear about the big explosion? I'll be like, was there cheese everywhere? Bam, Mr. Mitch, blame him for my happiness. Done. So thank you. That's very funny. Hey, Sarah, good to see you. Aloha. Aloha, Hingham. Bugs Bunny. Bugs Bunny and the Roadrunner. I mean, come on. Like, who doesn't, you know, and the fact that they were all hand-drawn, that just blows. I mean, at the time, I, it, that was what you did, so it didn't really. But now, you know, that there's Family Guy, right, which is very funny. But, you know, all the, all the, the all the. Uh, video gets generated, you know, right? And then, of course, the audio in the back end is sort of done still analog, if you will. Obviously, it's recorded digitally, but um, Google does help in a number of areas. Why did you do the thing where you like touch the phone and you're like, tell me a joke, make me laugh, <laughs> make me laugh, Google? Mm. Acme, yes. Oh, and the anvil. Uh, you know what's funny is if I, I, I'm, I, if I am anywhere. Like if I'm in a farm or I'm in a metal shop or I'm in even in when I was in metal shop in high school and I see an anvil. <laughs> the first thing I think is, I wonder if this is made by acne, acne, if it was made by acne. And if you were to drop it like out of a plane on top of a <laughs> on top of a coyote, how well could you get that placed on his forehead? Ah, the mighty anvil. Yeah, Wiley forever, dude. I mean, he was amazing, right? All right. See you, man. Have a good one. Um, so anyway, so what happened? I was watching the news and I didn't really realize it because, of course, essentially I was by myself. I mean, there was a Dave was there um, and he uh, um, got to love Thailand is his is his YouTube channel. And he had flown down there on this Air Asia unlimited pass thing that both of us. I think he actually told me about it, but I can't remember. Regardless, is he went down there and then we stayed at the same hotel the first night. And then I, you know, I travel when I travel. So therefore, like the next day, I just got up and went to my next destination. And so then and grabbed the hotel wherever I found a hotel. My goal and when I'm on vacation actually is to go to a different beach every day. So that's and I the good news is, is that I pretty much hit that goal every day. Um, but it involves moving around and changing hotels and that sort of thing. So anyway, we reconvened back in the in the airport. And then of course, there's social distancing, right? So it's not like he can like sit next to me, right? So he's like behind me and over one to the left and everything. Anyway, so I'm just sitting there, headphones on, catching up on YouTube videos, and I'm starting to watch the Beirut bombing. Not sorry, sorry, sorry. The Beirut explosion. Isn't it horrible how I did that? And the aftermath and the interviews with the people and the devastation. And then, of course, one of the videos, you know, following that, that Google's like, well, if he's interested in this, he's probably interested in this disaster that's also forming in Florida, you know, because they have this big storm coming. So I'm getting all this negative. <laughs> I'm getting all this CNN, which, of course, we know stands for constant negative news. And I didn't really sort of acknowledge it, you know, and I'm like, I don't know, you know, I just uh, kind of feeling uncomfortable, but I didn't really sort of know. Ah, maybe, OK, fine. I need to go to the restroom. So I go to the restroom. Oh, I should have bought some water. Maybe I'm just feeling OK. Ah, this plane's taking too long. Yep, 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 yep. Inside my head. And a friend of mine sends me a message online and uh, asks me something, you know, about like Facebook, like a, a kind of a, about friends. And the problem was is that I wasn't in a good space. And again, this is all my fault. <laughs> OK, I'm not blaming anything else but my reaction to this. And 
so what happened was is that uh, they asked me something about Facebook and I was just like, I don't, you know, here, here's, here's, a, here's a solution to find out the answer to your question. And they said, well, but I don't have Facebook. And then I said, well, what is this about? And they're like, you know, oh, anticipation, it's coming, that sort of thing. And any other time, like if they'd been sitting next to me, I would have laughed, maybe I would have hugged them. I probably would have thrown potato chips at them or something like, you know, just something, right? But for whatever reason, I was in a negative space at that time. And I reacted negatively. And I didn't like say, oh my God, I'm going to, you know, I hate, you know, it was just like sort of this cold, terse, sort of flippant response. And, um, and they responded, they're like, ouch, you know, and I get that. And the problem, of course, with just like texting is that, you know, there is or isn't emotion involved in it. There is or isn't emotion involved in emails and that sort of thing. So anyway, um, the reason they were reaching out to me is they basically wanted to give me a gift. And of course I was not in a good mood and I was not in the mood to receive it. And so therefore I responded reacted quite frankly negatively now i said i was sorry for sure afterwards and 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 meant it you know but the reason i'm bringing it up now is because i have this phrase that my dad said years ago that i completely believe in totally embrace and invite you to take a look at it wear it as a hat that sort of thing emotionally i didn't learn a whole lot doing everything right the first time and i didn't really learn how to be a good friend, boyfriend, uh, manager, employee, um, employer, you know, friend, coach, uh, entrepreneur. I didn't learn to do those things really well by not making some mistakes along the way. And to this sort of scenario, I don't believe that I've learned how to be a good friend by doing everything right the first time, right? Um, I've made mistakes and, you know, potentially hurt someone's feelings, whether it's just briefly or I've said, I, you know, when I was in my teens and my 20s, I really didn't know how to have a healthy relationship with a girl. I mean, you, there's no manual, as they say, right? I mean, of course, there is really how to be a better, but, you know, but I had to do a lot of things and, and learn as I went along. So anyway, the point is, is that uh, this occurred then. And I, again, I apologize. I know how to do that. I know how to apologize and recognize my behavior and say, OK, I shouldn't have done that. And then I won't do that again kind of thing moving forward. Right. But it really made me think about like all this new stuff that I'm doing over here how many mistakes I've made along the way. Like I can tell you right now, I learned how to, I, I took lessons for several weeks to be very proficient at riding a motorbike because <laughs> my first motorbike ride in, Thai, in Thailand, in Pattaya, I ended up in the hospital, okay? And I lost 30 minutes of my life. I completely blacked out and I woke up and I'm like, oh my God, I got a big bruise here and I got a massive hematoma on the side of my face, which pretty much has dissolved over the last seven years. But I mean, for the first two years, there was like a bump, you know, and I didn't ice it immediately, that sort of thing. Anyway, my point is, is that sometimes what I learn from is uh, uh, induced by severe pain, <laughs> which is lousy, but thumbs up before I go. Thank you, man. I didn't I didn't see that one. I'm a little behind on comments, so that's cool. I appreciate your thumbs up. I like option. If I didn't, it wouldn't be here. Aha. Right on, Matt Tech great goal yeah you know good morning stuck good to see you buddy thank you so much and do not forget to hit the like button for god's sake i can't help but wonder like if you if we were to meet stuck in florida if he'd be like hey how you doing like button <laughs> uh dude you want to try this mango and sticky rice Ooh, like button uh my opinion all the time even if not asked <laughs> right Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hi, how you doing, buddy? Glad you're here. Aloha, Alabama. Alabama slammer. You were looking at the sky. I am, actually. It's right outside of my window. And uh, it's pretty cloudy. And th the other reason, too, is that I'm sort of monitoring it because there is... Uh, my clothes are drying, hopefully, <laughs> outside. I mean, they are right now. And uh, But if it rains, it doesn't – it's very committal here. Uh, when it rains, it's uh, it's 110% at 80 miles an hour. Uh, and then it's not for, you know, a very short period of time. But one of the things that I thought about right after that happened was <clears> – <throat> um, 
well, I was concerned potentially that I hurt this person's feelings. But then I thought, no, 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 we're both adults and that sort of thing. But, you know, I really did sort of end up with egg on my face, if you will, because their goal in reaching out to me was to say, hey, Mike, you know, I, I have this gift I want to give you. And um, when I just sort of responded, reacted, really, you know, in a negative way, then they said, oh, fine, you know, here's your gift kind of thing. And I get that. I totally get that. And I've done that before, too. Oh, Gracie loves me, too, by the way. So that's the most important thing, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, <clears throat> so I got updates from Air Asia. <clears throat> Here's what I've discovered about Air Asia. Um, realistic expectations. That's another thing that I want to talk about. <clears throat> How's things in Thailand? What's the mood on the street? Uh, I can tell you that it's pretty darn positive. <clears throat> it depends where you are. If the street you're on is Banglo Road in Phuket, the mood is pretty desolate. <laughs> the mood is disappointing. The mood is frustration. The mood is mildly desperation. I mean, you hear, oh my God, you know, Thailand, this percentage of a GDP. Well, look at if Phuket is an island, you know, 80% of their revenue comes from tourism, like 80. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, they're bankrupt. Okay. Now, again, there's businesses that have, you know, longevity, right? And, you know, there's the statement that like for the first three years, potentially some businesses won't even make a profit. I know that when you start a radio station in the United States, or at least this used to be the rule and you apply for a license. And again, there's not too many frequencies left, but let's say for the sake of argument, we're back to the eighties when I was doing it, you apply for a broadcast license and you're like, you know, here's my idea and here's my frequency. I've done the frequency search and I know that this slot is available and I want this and we're going to do this. This is our programming. This is going to be our city of license. And here are our financials to prove to you, Federal Communications Commission, that we will be able to support this radio station with absolutely, as if we ever had zero revenue for the first seven years. We have enough money in the bank to pay for absolutely everything, the staff, the electricity, the equipment, to keep the lights on seven years with absolutely no profit, no revenue. That is the expectation, at least it was. It may have lowered because they wanted to like sell. But the point is, <clears throat> is that there are scenarios like that where you look at a business and you're like, look dude, if I've got like one month worth of reserves, then I probably shouldn't start this business. But people still do. I mean, you know, there's there's entrepreneurial people that are very risk tolerant and they're like, look, I don't I'm going for it, dude. I'm absolutely going for it. And then you hear these wild stories. We started in the garage. We only had one hundred dollars to our name. And now me and Waz are making this phone that's going to change the world. Right. <clears throat> so, I mean, there's but to be fair, I mean, they didn't start Apple with a hundred dollars. They started it with like tens of thousands of dollars that they borrowed from their parents. And of course, you know, their their office space was free. Again, it was in the garage and then they moved and that sort of thing. Same with Google. Right. Anyway, the point is, is that um, there are businesses that have some. Reserve and they're doing OK, and I would argue that it's pretty easy to spot those businesses. Those are the ones that are taking this time as an opportunity to upgrade, to revamp, to, um, you know, get rid of the, because look, here's the deal. I mean, if you run a bar and you're open till like four or five in the morning, the last thing you want to do is be like, okay, good. We're going to close the doors. Tell you what, why don't we do a super clean of everything tonight? And no, <laughs> you're like, look, dude, I want to go to bed. And, uh, and then you sleep basically most of the day and then you get up, you know, midday and then you're like, okay, well, let's make sure that the, you know, that we have everything we need. And the guys did the deliveries and all the ice shows up and the beer and the liquor and you know, the, whatever you want, but you're not like, oh man, I can't wait to just like take some time out and redo the furniture here. And really maybe we should change the ambiance of, you know, so a lot of them are taking the, uh, taking time to do that. And then there are the probably more than that businesses that are closed for good. <laughs> but here's the interesting. So and, and again, depends on what city you're in. I'm in Bangkok. So right now, if you walk down Sukhumvit in Bangkok, what time is it now? 810 is there's traffic. <laughs> and other than mask wearing, which, again, you know, they were doing that in Southeast Asia long before last no, uh, the, this January. Or March, I suppose, when we all globally sort of acknowledge what was going on. Um, it's very similar to the way it was. I mean, it is busy. The BTS is, you know, you are standing next to someone. you got a mask on, um, but it's busy during rush hour. There is a rush during rush hour for sure. Now, there's a little bit less of this, okay? But it's not, you know, significant. And in fact, the other thing too is that you got to remember like right now is August. And so it's low season, right, to begin with. Um, 
and as I mentioned in a couple of videos, yes, it's normally low season. Well, right now it's no season. And that's precisely why I basically vacation Monday through Thursday. Um, because when I go somewhere, I mean, it happened to me at two of the, two of the three resorts that I stayed. No, I'm sorry. One this time, the one resort I stayed at in the middle, which was that little bungalow, like right on the beach. <clears throat> I was the only one in the entire resort as a customer. <laughs> there are plenty of people working, you know, and they were like, oh, hey, do you want breakfast? I'm like, no, 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 it's good. They realized I like, because <clears throat> I told them three in one coffee. And so they went out and got some <laughs> the next morning. And I'm like, oh, I could travel with my own because I assume the place doesn't have the kind I like. Right. Anyway. <clears throat> um, the ties are, well, first of all, they're together on this one. <laughs> uh, that is a great mood to be a part of. Um, you know, look, no one's, there are people in industries for sure that are very excited about what's happening. Of course, the tourism industry is the one that's being, you know, sort of laser focused on and you're like, oh my God, everyone's, they're never going to make any more money and the businesses are closing. Well, yes, there were businesses to the point about Bangkok, the businesses right down the street, they closed and you know, all the furniture was removed, all of the, you know, whatever was in there. <clears throat> and now there's a new curry and chicken place like a chain chicken place i mean you know and the, again the chains right even if it's a if it's a franchise those people have to have some money you know to be able to float the thing while they lose money basically every month until they start making a profit and um you know and they have the logo and they had a grand opening and they had balloons and all this you know and so there's opportunity for those people there was a little shop downstairs because you know how like in condos like the bottom floor usually has like shops in it so there's a guy who is a um dry cleaner and he's at the bottom and he it seemed like he never changed anything he was open every single day that he could open always had clothes in there always see people coming in and out and i'm like man dry clean right and so i mean i'm in a thai neighborhood so that his customers are not far out. and um so it's really interesting to sort of watch that uh, 7-Elevens are doing a fine business. That's a sort of requirement. All of the markets and all of the people on the street, like there's the lady that I get my chicken and sticky rice from. There's the guy that I get my som tom from. There is the lady that I get my salads from. And they're all sort of dispersed around the, you know, the two blocks sort of around my house. And so it's nice because I like stop to those on the way as I come home. And, you know, the, these people don't make a million, million dollars to begin with. But, you know, and there's also a guy that I get, a, you know, coconut milkshake from on the way home and you know he's kind of happy to see me but you know he was out there for a while like during the day especially when school wasn't happening and his son would be sitting with him and they'd both be on their phones like the whole day and i just like kept on walking by and i'm like you know even if i like don't need a, a coconut shake it's 25 baht and i certainly am not just going to randomly give this guy 25 baht but you know it's kind of hot in, Bang in, in bangkok maybe a coconut shake would go really good right now i wonder who i should buy it from and then so you go on with that um but again, in other parts of the Pattaya, like all along Beach Road, dude, it is weird. I mean, it is it is just so so that mood is for me eerie. <laughs> um, it's surprising. Uh, I think I'm a little sad about it. Um, I don't go there. Actually, a couple of times I thought, well, maybe I'll go down to Jump Tian. I get this buddy who owns a condo, whatever. And uh and I'm just like, nah, I don't feel it because it just it just felt weird there. The only thing that was nice about it is it was easy to get there by bus. Well, the walk along the beach was nice um, on, on Beach Road there. And then I took the ferry over to Kolarn. And I'm like, OK, well, that was kind of cool. But even still, when I got the Kolarn, like it was, uh, you know, it's a vacation place. Right. Um, so it's it depends on the area. Um, the beaches I were at, I was at in Phuket, you know, again, Monday through Thursday. Right. It was. Um, vacant essentially i mean i had only child beach as i've mentioned before which i love but the uh you know there were just less people there so there wasn't like a ton of people making food and they were all like depressed as far as mood goes but um you know it's it's a benefit and even you know dave mentioned to me the other day he said oh my god of all the times in the entire history of the universe now is the time to be traveling in thailand you know if you're here um it's a challenge for many people to stay here i mean i've got a challenge but it's going to be I'm not worried about it. It's just that I have to do, you know, certain things to stay here versus what my plan was. My plan was all I got to do is leave Thailand and go to like Cambodia with Gracie, of course, 
um, and hang out there for like one hour to one week or whatever. And as long as I stamp back in, in basically the first week in October, then I can stay in Thailand for one more year. Well, I can't leave Thailand. Okay. So I've got to do some additional things. And for me, I actually like it because it's kind of like a learning experience. Um, no, the first time you rode a motorbike. Oh, I looked at the sky when I first rode a motorbike. Uh, well, I don't know about that. I mean, if you mean like metaphorically, meaning I like laid down and uh, I said, oh, my God, I saw the bright white light. I didn't see any white light. I just I mean, I was unconscious. That's <laughs> well, mm, let me be clear. I was told I was not unconscious. Actually, uh, I was awake the whole time, I guess. Um, I just don't remember what happened. And so that was interesting. <laughs> Waking up with blood on me as well as my, on my friend's sweater. That yeah, was a weird thing. Mm. You might be safer over there than here, elbow cough. Oh, I mean, I totally think so. I mean, <laughs> th there's nothing, there is nothing in the United States I would go back for right now, except my parents. Um, because like any paperwork that I might need or whatever, all the stuff that I need is either physically here or physically in my parents' house. And my dad, who's awesome, um, has a scanner that will do 1200 DPI. So everything that he sent me is outstanding quality. And then I use that because, you know, the other nice thing about a whole bunch of like sort of government, if you will, offices or official offices and that sort of thing is, especially in the US, is they're all closed. So even if they're like, well, you got to come in and you got to prove that you're no, 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 no. You got to scan whatever you got to do and you got to send it to us because we're not going in the office and we don't want you here, sick, crazy person who might not wear a mask because your personal rights are at risk. And so, um, you know, I'm doing everything online and it's and, and that part is actually quite nice because I prefer to do it that way. I mean, there's absolutely no reason I need to physically bring paper to an office. So that they can, so that they, that I, the, the physical paper that I've gotten from taking a PDF and printing it, so that they can then take that printed PDF and scan it into a PDF that they, you know, store in their system, right? And that's foolish, but that's how many things occur. And uh, so to that point, I really appreciate uh, not having to do a whole lot of that while I'm over here. Uh, Winder making us fun of us. Hill, really? I don't, I apologize. I don't know what I said. Is the rail light area asking for a friend? Yeah, well, that's fine if you're asking for yourself too. It doesn't matter. I'm not going to judge it. Um, the uh, they're open, uh, but there's nobody there. Like, okay, so the area is open. The number of businesses that are open in it is, you know, less than half, and uh, most of them are completely dead, and they're really desperate, right? So, I mean, if you walk, I mean, I've walked past these things, and it's like it's like audio dominoes is what I call it. It's like massage, 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 massage. You know, I mean, they're all asking me, and uh, and some of them are just doing it like less. They're like on their phone. They're like, oh, you want a massage? You know, and I'm just like, okay, whatever. First of all, like, I mean, a sign spinner. You know, those guys that spin signs like out in front of like a new subway or whatever. If they're not into it, like if they just got the head, if they got the headphones on and they're dancing around, they're doing it, and they're like really committed to the sign spinning. Maybe I'll cruise into your business. But if you're just doing it, or if you're like just sitting there taking a break. No way. I'm not going to buy anything from you, dude. If you got if you're going to be a sign spinner, you'd be a damn good sign spinner. And um, uh, so anyway, um, you know, but what's interesting is so today. So, well, today's Friday, actually. And uh, the other reason I started this stream early, actually, is I'm going to uh, is because I wanted to use the word actually like about 17 times as much as I possibly could in, 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 a, in a few sentences. Is because what I want to do is leave here no later than 11 a.m and go meet some buddies over in the Ekamai area. So therefore, um, this will be less than three more hours. I promise. <laughs> mm. So anyway, uh, so let me get to some of these. And so me, to that point, Hike, is I may cruise over to the red light districts tonight. The problem is, is that I'm usually asleep by like nine o'clock, nine, because I wake up at like 435. I wake up when the, before the sun rises. If I wake up and it's after the guys have started school, um, cleaning the pool at 6 30 as far as i'm concerned i'm starting to waste the day i'm wasting daylight i need to get up i need to do something i need to be happy or you know make somebody happy i can't make anybody happy but i might you know maybe provide a uh provide a scenario where they might smile uh fair enough yes duck says oh the red light districts will be open by the time your friend gets there mango says i'm not sure if you heard or talked about this in your previous vlog about the Marines that died in an amphibious vehicle training exercise in San Diego. 
So here's, uh, I did not hear about it, um, but here's the harsh reality of where I lived in San Diego. I lived in Coronado. Coronado is where the SEALs train. It is also where many other train and then right across the water is mcrd which is basically where all the marines on sort of that side of the country begin their life as a marine sorry i shouldn't not that many but it is a it is a it is a location where a lot of marines go and then there's um Pen, Pen, camp pendleton which is right now san diego is a very you know military thing the reason i bring that up is additionally where i lived on an island there was a very 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 tall bridge and unfortunately, as you know, tall bridges for people that are absolutely desperate and want to commit suicide, those people jump off those bridges. And that would happen at least twice a year. So with all that said, there is there are guys that die in these amphibious vehicles in San Diego, and you just don't hear about it on the news. OK, so I'm not trying to just like make light of it or whatever. But no, I didn't hear about this time but I knew about it several times ago and none of you guys knew about it. The vehicles, they will, um, they also do um, the training exercises where the helicopter will basically hover like very close to the water, such that the water is an absolute disaster. It's like a tornado. And then they lower the guys down into it to train and to like rescue and that sort of thing. So I mean, there's a, there's a ton of very, very intense training in San Diego so that when you like get out in real life, you don't die. And the sad reality of that is that there are training exercises where part of the training, unfortunately, before they got out into real life, they die. And yeah, so that is it sucks. Um, but I can tell you that, uh, you know, to that point, thank God they do the training. And to my point of what I was take, of talking about at the beginning of the of the of the broadcast. I didn't learn a whole lot doing everything right the first time. I mean, I would guess that the the way that you unfortunately learn to do many things as a Navy SEAL is to make mistakes, get hurt, you know, have to save your buddy's life along the way of the training. I mean, those guys, if you've ever seen it on the in in the media, in the in the movies, the isolation chambers that they have, right, where they basically, you know, and of course, it's Hollywoodized. But I can tell you, I mean, you drive right down the street and you look over and there are basically shipping containers on top of each other. And that's what they use for those. And so, you know, there's a reality that occurs over there to train people to be incredibly durable, to go to scenarios where, and right next to me was a Navy SEAL. The guy lived in, the, he rented a room in this big house, this giant house next to me, actually in Coronado. And he was a Navy SEAL and he would go away for, you know, two, three weeks at a time and do what Navy SEALs do, which is very dangerous. Um, but like if you've ever met Navy SEALs, they're very humble. They're very focused. They're very team oriented <laughs> uh, and they believe in a shared leadership model and they have uh, a lot of integrity in my experience meeting them. I've never served with them. I've never been in the field with them, but my IO with them in a, you know, um, civilian type interface, uh, they, they're wonderful men. I've never met any Navy SEAL women, and I don't know whether that's kind of like, I mean, I've never also met any women hockey players, professional hockey players in the NHL. I believe there are some, but I just never met them. Um, Sarah says, I started an Etsy store to sell off my overflow of yarn items. That's a great idea. Talk about resilient. Way to go. I haven't heard that yet. May they rest in peace. Indeed, Hike. Indeed. I like to spin a good yarn. It's just so you know, we refer to it as yarn up there. If you're up in Hingham and you get your pocketbook and you park your car, then you're going to basically be selling your yarn on Etsy. Ba 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 ba. Yes, sir, Paul. Completely agree. Hello from Hot Atlanta. I liked Atlanta when I, but again, I like hot. <laughs> People down there were nice. I do want to try spinning yarn at some point. <laughs> you're going to get a loom and just like you know start making your own fabric. I'm sure, Sarah, if, if you if you did what I did when you were, you know, in grade school and that sort of thing. I mean, we would go down. We'd have field trips to Plymouth Plantation and, uh, you know, where where Thanksgiving started <laughs> and um, with the pilgrims. And they would have, you know, they would be making the yarn and they would have the, you know, they slide the thing through and then they move the things back and forth. All this manual stuff that is now done at light speed in factories filling China. Uh, life after darkness has got to be a great vibe. Hmm. That's a nice one. That's a t-shirt right there. 
Atlanta is uh, in the his house. Florida, Boston, New Jersey. True, but at the moment, I don't have the room to take up. Yeah, absolutely. I know. I get it. It's a finite amount of time. Speaking of social distancing, kids are going back to school. A story out of Texas. A photo was put out on the Internet from inside the school. Hugely crowded hallway. Students mostly not wearing masks. That is really too bad. Because, again, I guess what happens, right, is that kids can get it and they can pass it on, but they're not necessarily going to get really long term harm. The chances of them dying is even lower than people that are, you know. So that's too bad. I don't really, I, again, I don't see any, there's no downside in my life to wearing a mask everywhere I go. I just, you know, it. all it does is, you know, I look at the numbers and I look at the success and I also look at the life I'm having over here in the land of masks. And it's friggin' spectacular. So yesterday, today, I just saw a story that the students that leaked the photo were suspended. I'm serious. That is... I wonder what their justification for it was. It's like, oh, you posted pictures on the Internet of someone under 18 without their permission or without their parents' permission, rather. So that's why. See, now, OK, to the point of what I was talking about earlier, didn't learn a whole lot doing everything right the first time. I'm having learning moments. I'm not making mistakes. What are those children learning by being suspended? I mean, look, here's the thing. If you like, you know, smoke pot in school or you like damage something or you do something that effectively is kind of against the law, let's say, maybe not 100 percent, but it, it's hovering onto that thing. And they suspend you from school. When I was a kid, if you got suspended from school, that was a big deal. You were in rubble and your parent. I mean, I could I can't even imagine if I back then, if I'd gotten suspended, my parents would have just lost a, a lot of respect for me is how I would have felt. Um, but I'll tell you right now, it would have been a learning moment. Kind of like, dude, I'm never doing that again. Like that was horrible. I felt horrible. I'm remorseful. I can't believe I did that. I need to make amends somehow. And I don't know how to do that because I'm only 14 or however long, you know, these kids maybe were eight, but what's the learning moment there? Like, I mean, is it just like, no, smack them in the face and say, look, you've made a mistake and you're a bad, bad, bad person. And if you ever do it again, you'll be even badder. <laughs> um, or are they like, well, no, here's the reason behind why your son or daughter was suspended, Mr. and Mrs. Um, and here's the, the, the learning we hope that occurs through here. I mean, I'm not saying they didn't do that, but I hope they did. Booking holdings increased by about $100 today. Fr seriously. Yeah, I guess that, well, that makes sense because they probably cratered, right? Well, they probably cratered in March and then came back. But I mean, I use a go to like crazy. So, I mean, that's, you know, booking.com holdings is the one that owns the majority or, well, not the majority, but they own, I think, I think nine properties, right? M meaning websites that basically, I mean, some of them are aggregators. Some of them are, you know, the Agoda slash booking and they all, it's a little different model to it. Agoda, if you guys don't know, that's a um, Thai company, one of the more successful uh, Thai startups ever. And uh, nobody knows that. <laughs> a lot of the call center is still here, actually, in Bangkok. But what's interesting, it's it, the call center is here in Bangkok, but it's filled with Filipinas. And that, that Gracie has met several of them, you know. So that was kind of interesting. Hikes is in the principal. Um, so there's going to be consequences if it happens again. His school announcement was leaked to the media too. Okay, well, I think that that is appropriate. In other words, look, these students did this incorrect thing. I mean, I'm not saying what they did is incorrect, but let's say, you know, as a principal, or usually it's the vice principal that lays down the law, at least in my experience. But regardless, let's say it's the principal in that scenario. Um, yeah, I mean, look at all the other kids hear about it, too. And they're like, oh, my God, Jim did this one thing. There's no way I'm going to do that one thing because he got suspended. You know, so. I mean, it's one thing to get a detention and that, you know, that's not real great either, at least when I was a kid. Maybe now they just like, ah, whatever, dude, give me detention. You know, like that guy in Breakfast Club <laughs> who thought he was all that. You know, hitting the like button is free. Uh, just saying. Absolutely. I'm not too far on comp. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm behind. I've been I've been yakking away. This is absolutely crazy stuff. Yeah, it is. I don't I don't know if it adds value. In other words, what is the learning moment that occurred here? Um, are these students walking away, you know, to any I mean, I can't I don't know what, you know, thank you very much, MedTech. Appreciate it. I can't, you know, speak to what their level of 
leadership might be at that time. But, you know, I mean, look, it, no matter what age you're at, I mean, there was always like the kid that you kind of looked up to at least one, maybe not. Um, or, you know, the guys that were, I mean, some of them, the only way that they led was via, you know, positional power. In other words, the only reason that I'm following this eighth grader is because I'm a sixth grader and there's, you know, and I, and I want to do what the big kids do, or if I don't, maybe he'll beat me up or whatever that, you know, so the, the positional power was the only leadership quality they had. And of course, as they get older, those are also the guys that when you go back to your high school reunion and you're like, oh, by the way, like I'm this awesome. Uh, and they're like, oh, yeah, I'm still doing this. I'm still living in the same place. Like I never went to I dropped out of high school or I dropped out of college and I never like followed through, you know, and, you know, because a lot of there's there's a comparison. And for me, it was I never went to the uh I never went to my high school reunions because they were always in November and I lived in California and they're like, yeah, Mike, you want to come home for Thanksgiving? I'm like, absolutely not, dude. It's like 40 degrees out Fahrenheit, five degrees. I mean, you're delusional. I'm not going to tell you what it voted over over November. You guys want to come out to San Diego? Go for it. Because I live 365 days a year where you guys save up all year to come for two weeks. So yeah, I'll come home in July and August. If you guys want to hang out, and that's what occurred. I would come home in July and August and I would be anyway, they would have this expectation that, oh, my God, you're from California. Right. In other words, and California is gigantic. I mean, if you guys don't know, California is bigger than Canada. The population is bigger than Canada. I believe even today it still has definitely in the top 10 uh, highest economies in the world. I mean, if it was its own country, it would have, you know, like I think it was number eight. It was number five for a while. Fifth largest economy in the world. Uh, and again, a lot of that comes from Silicon Valley and that sort of thing. But there's also plenty of large companies and well, Qualcomm for one in San Diego. I think they're the biggest employer, biggest private employer, certainly. Well, it's public company, but non-government because there's a lot there's a lot of Marines in uh, San Diego. It's just so, you know, Camp Pendleton is, you know, got a few. And um, so anyway, uh, there's um, <clears throat> there's this expectation um, that if you're from California, if you grow up in New England and really all you know of California is basically what you see on TV. Like if all you knew about Hawaii when you were a kid in New England was seen, was what you got from Hawaii Five O and Magnum PI or whatever, you know, sort of news maybe that you watched, <laughs> um, you'd have this picture in your head of what California is. So when Mike comes home, you know, from California and I was in my twenties and I got a ponytail and an earring, you know, and all this, and I'm a little different than I was in high school for sure. Um, you know, oh my God, tell me about California, you know? And so, uh, that would always be sort of this comparison. Well, I'm doing this here and I'm going to this, you know, cause I mean, look at, there are some very good schools in Boston, you know? So, I mean, and there was, you know, several guys that I went to high school with, of course, that went to Harvard just cause there's numbers, Boston university, Boston college, Northeastern, um, you know, Brown down in, uh, um, geez, Rhode Island, um, and just many, 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 many others. I went to University of Massachusetts. That's not a lousy school. And then, of course, there's MIT and all of the other ones, you know, that are just like sort of world class, like the number one of something in the world. Harvard, you know, Harvard Law, Harvard Business, all that. Anyway, um, so there's that comparison. Like, what is, you know, what does California have? You know, oh, we've heard of UCLA. In fact, it's so, you know, and this isn't anything bad or whatever. It's just that, you know, you haven't bothered to research it or you basically don't have this coming up in your daily life you don't know about it if you live in california you know about the university of california system you know about the california state university system if you're you know going to college and so yes a lot of people have heard of ucla but men, not many people in new england have heard of ucsd right which is university of california san diego and so people would even label where i was going to go to school ucsd as, yeah, you're going to UCLA at San Diego. I mean, they wouldn't really sort of make the connection that there is a UC, I think there's 17 of them, Irvine, you know, Berkeley, that sort of thing. And they, so there's, again, there's this like uh, curiosity too. It's like, well, you've lived there. Like, what's it like? Like, oh my God, how do you get, one of my buddies came out and we went to the beach, as you might guess. I was living like a block and a half away. And in doing so, naturally, one of the questions was, oh my God, how do you get anything done here? You know, the, the, all these beautiful girls everywhere. It's sunny 300 days a year, at least. And um, the beach is big and massive. And there's, you know, and I was in my early 20s. There's bars everywhere. There's really cheap drinks, you know, at happy hour. And, the, you know, the food is great and all this. How do you get anything done here? And just like anything else, if you stay in a scenario long enough, you're like, okay, well, I get, you know, I get stuff done because it's like that's 
it was a novelty at first. It was neat, but now it's like sort of worn off. And now I'm a little bit more responsible, a little bit, not much in my twenties, but a little bit. Uh, glad you're at the table as well, my friend. Correction to my story, North Paulding High School in Dallas, Georgia. It was in Georgia, not Texas. Fair enough. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. I get up at 12, go to work at 1, take an hour for lunch, and I'm home by 2. Good for you, man. Rackham, Florida is hot and humid, uh, as usual, this time of year. Oh, yeah. Big time. Atlanta's big time hot right now. I need a job like that that pays 100 k annually. Well, you know, I mean, there are plenty of jobs in the United States that pay that, right? And great benefits, too. Yeah, good benefit. Yeah, good benefits are good. Some of it over there has moved up here, not much as in Florida. I got to tell you, I love the West Coast of Florida. What did he say? 95 in Florida, 70% humidity, dew point of 70. So therefore, it felt like 107. Ooh, I like that. I do. Um, mm, 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 for some female company. Speaking of training, uh, I've seen programs on National Geographic and the History Channel. The military wants the training to be as tough or as tougher than the actual war. Well, right. I mean, that's the point, right? You train to be able to figure out how to do it. You know, you, you train in a fake plane <laughs> and there are people that crash in those fake planes so that they won't crash in the real plane, right? Um, so... Oops, sorry. About five to six away from retirement. Just trying to make it till then. Good job. Save up. Fifth grade field trip. Ah, yes, indeed, Sarah. I absolutely. Yes. Who did you have in fifth grade? Uh, the weaving loom. Indeed. Those things are really cool. You're about to say, I'm too old for that shit. Like Danny Glover and Lethal Weapon. Yes, that's exactly who I was trying to manipulate or imitate. Once the international flights open up, I'm heading for the girlfriend. Yeah, I get it, dude. Good for you. News said that they got suspended for putting the school in a negative light. That's weird. Um, that's too bad that that was their uh, justification for it. Because if I'm a kid and I'm suspended, I'm punished for that. Um, I don't know what my learning is going to be from that. Uh, because, well, anyway, I don't know what my learning would be from that. Hello, Robert. Good to see you, sir. Thank you so much for coming by. Uh, there are kids at the cool kids table welcoming you, which is always great to see. Uh, I, this has just jumped around and I missed, sorry, hold on. Um, you guys are saying hi to each other, which is awesome. Thank you, because you know I get behind in my comments. I'm at 8.31 right now in the comments. It's 8.37. I'm only six minutes behind, so that's cool. Hopefully, I won't miss any. If I did, just type it in again. When I was in school, I always looked up to the guy that knocked me on my ass. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, too bad. Missed out on the 10th class reunion, but nowadays, they do send a letter, uh, and I'm not on Facebook much. Yeah, we have a... We have a um, Facebook group that talks about it. But again, it's, you know, there's, there's no way I'm going back home in November, dude. It's freezing. I mean, the, I mean, I just know October. I went home last year and I was like, oh, this is just bad news bears. There wasn't one warm day, man. Com what I like, you know. So anyway. 40 million people in California. Well, I mean, of course, you could Google it, but I believe it's I believe it's around that. Uh, I believe it's about uh, I believe it's 38, but I'm not totally sure. There you go, yeah. Well, it depends where you go. Where I lived, it wasn't overcrowded. If you're talking about San Diego. Uh, sorry, 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 California. Cal. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, pack my cab, my ha pack my cab by the Havid Yad. In the Havid Yad. Pack my cab in the Havid Yad. And again, you know, it's what's funny about it, Sarah will probably be able to acknowledge this, is that when you're from Hingham, you don't really have as much of a Boston accent. Um, USC, UCLA, yeah, University of Southern California, which is a completely private school. It's not part of a whole system. The UC system is gigantic, as is the CSU system, although there's no real naming that includes CSU in California, California State University. Um, what they've done is they've changed most of the um, most of the names of those schools to that city state university. So in other words, California State University, San Diego, which originally, right? But they haven't been that for years. They're SDSU, San Diego State University, San Jose State University, San Francisco State University. So they use that um, 
Ryan, how you doing, buddy? Yeah, he went there, so he can say that. Absolutely. The University of Spoiled Daughters. I said that to a friend of mine one time, and he goes, is that why they smell that way? I'm like, yes, because they're spoiled. Uh, only along the coast from the Mexican border to Santa Barbara, then around San Francisco, the rest is great. Oh, as far as uh, is being overcrowded. Well, I mean, again, it depends where you go. I mean, I where I lived initially in La Mesa, it wasn't overcrowded. I mean, it was middle class and it was, you know, single family homes and that sort of thing. Um, I mean, again, it depends what you mean by middle class. I mean, middle class. It depends what you mean by overcrowded. But um, but yeah, I mean, well, inland, too. I mean, if you go like Barstow is not overcrowded, right? Because there's all this junk land, you know. Um, Park Mackay in the Harvard Yard. Wicked Pissa. Did you ever meet Click and Clack from the talk show on NPR? Nope, never met him. But yes, used to listen to him quite a bit. Because they originate out of, I think they originate out of, uh, there's a ton of PBS content that originates out of WGBH in Boston, Channel 2. Um, they're, they've been around a long time. And uh, my parents, you know, uh, they're big fans of, um, of PBS in San Diego, uh, PBS in, um, in Boston, WGBH Boston. Never spent time in California, landed in San Francisco once, took a flight to San Jose, and drove a car back to Seattle. Then I got my uh, uncle's dealership. Uncles, sorry. Then I got my uncle's dealership. Great drive home. Beautiful drive after the city. Yeah, um, I agree. I mean, San Francisco. There's, it's a city, right? <laughs> it's a big, big city. And I don't know when you were there, but last time I was there, uh, my label of it is it's the world's most expensive city that smells like pee, um, because there's like homeless people all over the place, and uh, unfortunately, they don't like to urinate indoors for some reason. That's a it's a new sport, I guess, when you're not able to do that, you do it outside. And so it was like really sort of annoying. So I do not like San Francisco. Um, grateful that I don't necessarily have to go through there. Although to be fair, I mean, transiting, you know, through Los Angeles, I mean, LAX is a dump. I mean, the fact that we like welcome people back into the United States in an area like that, I mean, when you get off the plane, it's actually pretty nice. Like usually, unless you're way at the end, but for the most part, the majority of the jetways where you get off, and you go upstairs and you enter and then you go downstairs to go through immigration. The majority of that is actually quite nice. And they have like the wires up above. It's like supposed to basically represent a piano kind of thing. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's well lit. The car, it's taken care of. It's cleaned, that sort of thing. And then you get down to baggage claim <laughs> and there's like ceiling tiles falling out. And I'm just like, come on, man. You know, and it's, it's under construction. So they're improving it. I get it. You know, out outdoors. I mean, but I mean, it is a that you want to talk about overcrowded. Los Angeles, LAX is totally overcrowded. Same with San Francisco. I mean, you walk through the, the terminal I mean, the carpet is all worn out. And it's just I mean, God, yeah, it was crazy. Miss Glover in the fifth grade. Oh, I remember that name. There we go. Mr. Belcher in the fifth. Very good. Yeah, I'm sure no kids made fun of him with that name, huh? Mrs. Nagel in the third was my first real crush. You know what's funny about that, Mr. Mitch? I don't know if it was my first, but I remember I had a crush on my third grade teacher. She was, you know, in my mind, beautiful, right? Um, but I remember that. I don't remember what her name was. I think it was Sullivan, and then she got married or something like that and changed her last name. Um, but yeah, third grade. How fun. Uh, had Mrs. Albert was in the fifth, 21, 2001 to 2002. That makes me think of Mary Lou... Lit now, lit, lit or now. I think that's how you would pronounce that. Have you worked in law enforcement, military communications? Uh, well, communications, yeah, but no, no, never law enforcement or military. I worked in uh, radio for 20 years and then kind of still do it, right? Um, I mean, I consult. Uh, there, I'm going to be doing an upcoming, there's a podcast that I'm going to actually, I'm honored. I'm going to be the new co host on from Bangkok here from the Big Mango. And uh, that's going to be fun because this guy that I did uh, a podcast with before, yes, he does podcasts, but he also uploads them to YouTube. So it's kind of like this a similar thing. But it's neat being able to sort of, you know, banter back and forth with someone who also has the gift of gab, but also gets me. It's very similar. So. Ahra Radio. Doing the math, sir. I'm, uh, I'm confirmed that I'm old. <laughs> it's all relative. Uh, 39.5. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, so that's probably 50 million by now. Sorry, 40 million by now. Yeah, rounding up. But that's about right. 
Uh, boy. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Don't remind me I turned 30 in a couple weeks. Hey, you're not going to get a whole lot of sympathy from most of the guys here. I'm 52. <laughs> 29, I remember the days. Yeah, me too, buddy. Happy birthday in a couple weeks. Absolutely. That's really cool. Sarah, how'd you find me? I'm, I'm just curious because, uh, you know, I don't. Because um, I'm trying to think like who I still interface with from Pingham and, uh, you know, my, who was my next door neighbor, Missy. You guys know Missy. She's from Oregon and she kind of she comes in occasionally. Um, but I'm trying to I'm, I'd be really curious to know how you found me. That would be neat. Um, did you ever meet Ron Burgundy? No. <laughs> oh, you know, actually, well, the actor, I actually have met him, as it turns out. Um, I didn't meet them when they were shooting. Uh, the only sort of set I've really been on uh, when they filmed in San Diego was <laughs> uh, Veronica Mars, because they filmed that locally, and they would use, well, actually, believe it or not, her school was modeled after USD, but they did all of the shooting of the university at San Diego State University, which was sort of it. They would occasionally do shoots at USD, but for the most part, they were at uh, SDSU. But uh, yeah, I met the folks on on that show several times. Uh, Seattle has a lot in common with San Francisco. True. I'll tell you something, Mitch. There's the interesting thing is that when I first got to San Francisco, it like felt like Boston, right? I mean, it's got the age of because San Diego is not that old. I mean, it is as a city, but not as like, Sorry, it is as physical land, you know, of like the na the natives living there, right? Um, it's got some history that goes back to the 1800s and that sort of thing. But uh, th it, that's very common. Like the 1800s is a very sort of common, oh, yeah, this is when this started. This is when uh, uh, San Diego de Acala, de, Al de Acala came and like did this, you know. Um, whereas, you know, where I grew up, where Sarah's, you know, in 1635 was when our town was incorporated, right? few years before there was the United States, a <laughs> few years before there was the Civil War, a few years before there was a Declaration of Independence. And uh, so knowing that, OK, knowing that there was like no Declaration of Independence and knowing the rights that were given to various types of people, you know, male, female, uh, you know, Native Americans versus, you know, Caucasian males from the from the from Britain, basically, that came in. Um, if you think that the first Thanksgiving was a panacea of hugs and kisses. I would do some additional research because th we were not, we, they were not treating the natives very well in order to get their land. <laughs> so, yeah, I agree. Uh, Mr. Mitch, it is not cool. Sounds like a party I was having in the eighties. Ha ha ha. Absolutely. There you go. Well said. Uh, I went to a few too. Got to get everyone. Have a great night, Paul. Thank you so much, man. Drive safe. Really glad you came by. Hello, Dave. Good to see you, buddy. Hope everything's going well for you. Oh, wait, you just uh, just got back from the U.S. Embassy. How'd it go, Dave? Hopefully it was good. Hopefully your appointment went well. Um, I know that my experience over there, they've always been cordial to me. Gracie is the only one on this team that's actually physically been inside. Um she went there to basically go to the interview for her U.S. visa, and she was treated incredibly well. And uh, I was proud of that. I was glad that our uh, State Department decided to treat foreigners with respect here in the kingdom of Thailand, which doesn't surprise me. They do not in Manila. They're incompetent. <laughs> uh, and uh, the people that they hire either don't get enough training, the leadership is lousy or whatever, but you're going to be on a podcast. Where can we tune in to hear it? Um, so the short answer is I'll let you know. Uh, the, um, I can't say which one yet because I haven't met with the other guy and we haven't sort of hashed out the details. Um, but you know, I mean, it's going to be very similar to this, that the equipment will be better <laughs> and it won't be in my living room. Um, he actually has a studio. Uh, so there's that. I'm also going to be on another podcast. I haven't scheduled this yet. Ah, oh, there's a pigeon I'm out of the cam, but there's a pigeon right out there. And he's eyeing my clothes and he's like, boy, I could sit on top of that and take. OK, he took off. Good. Um, yeah, I'll absolutely let you know. I'll absolutely let you know. And then and, and likely from the day that I start doing it from then forward, it'll probably there'll probably be a link to it in my. Um, 
in the description of all of my YouTube videos. Looking up Hingham and found you. Oh, interesting. Cool. Um, hello. Just got back from the USM. Oh, what, did I? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, right. You came to the YouTube thing versus your Facebook. Yeah, they both show up, which is good. Hingham is still older than Boston. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm glad you asked about the visa. Notary to say that he's not married uh, so that he can marry his girlfriend. Yeah, that's pretty common. Um, and, uh, you know, I uh, I know that, you know, it's funny about it. So when Gracie would do her annual paperwork, basically, for her business, she would have to go and they get various sort of pieces of paper that, you know, say things like or they verify things like you haven't committed any crimes or you are who you are or you've paid your taxes or you're married or not married. And she would have to do that for her business every single year. And uh, and I get that because, of course, over the course of a year, I mean, even on our income taxes right in the U.S., I mean, you have to state whether you've gotten married or divorced in that in that year. Um, but, uh, you know, the. Um, the committing a crime thing and getting like barangay clearance, which is one of the things that they need to do. It's an amazing amount of paper. I mean, it takes her the entire day. So, I mean, again, it's only one day out of the entire year to do this. And then she renews and she pays all of her social security a year ahead of time. Social security taxes ahead of time. She pays her Phil health ahead of time, which is sort of their equivalent of Medicare. It's their equivalent of Medicare. It is not equivalent to Medicare. <laughs> um, the coverage is, bad and uh but it is it is absolutely for the money it's better than nothing and, and and for the money it's actually pretty good care considering how much you have to pay into it which is not much um so anyway there you go my bad i need visa for usa i think a lot of people do well apply 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 and if you get if you get denied just apply again i'll tell you right now that i would recommend anybody who gets denied a visa to the United States from their home country, um, do what you can to get a lesser visa, meaning if you can transit through the U.S. Um, a transit visa in the U.S. technically, legally, gives you the ability to enter the U.S. and stay there for 29 days. Do not do that. <laughs> if you want to sort of, you know, prove to them somehow that you will abide by the rules of the 10 year. See, that's what's amazing, right? You get a transit visa and it's like, OK, look, at you. the bottom line is with this transit visa, you're supposed to come into the United States and leave the United States. It's using the United States as the, but you got to enter and then leave just to transit, just to transfer. And of course, you know, like I don't enter Taiwan when I go through. I mean, they just have a, you know, people don't enter the country. They just get checked in again and they go to the next plane. It's a pretty efficient system. But unfortunately, in the U.S., you need to enter. And so therefore, as part of that, if you're just like tran transferring through and that can be a big financial benefit, I'll tell you that. So anyway, get a transit visa and then come in and leave the same day. G give them absolute evidence that you are not going to go up against the bounds, that you're not going to be a risk to the United States and then potentially reapply for your visa. Because again, the, the visas that are available, it's like, okay, well, you can either stay for 30 days or 10 years. And in that 10 years, it's not like they ask you to give a barangay clearance every year. They don't ask for you to, if you change your marital status or anything like this. Now, if you change your last name, then yes, you need to do another sort of update, which you don't necessarily, you don't just like void the current visa. And then if you've got seven years left on it, they just like give you a new one based on getting a new uh, a new last name, you effectively have to reapply. And uh, so that could be a bummer. Um, but anyway, uh, depending upon MedTech, I don't, I believe you're from Australia, right? Um, there's a company in the US that I use, uh, and the name of them is It's Easy, I T S Easy, I T S E A S Y dot com. And they provide, um, I don't know if they do this for people with Australian passports. Um, but they provide uh, passport renewal services in the U.S., which is a common thing to do. Um, and it's a lot easier to just give a service your thing and then the fast track it. And then like a week later, well, I mean, they can get you a new passport. They can get they can get your passport renewed in less than 24 hours um, if you can get them the documents fast enough. Um, but the point is, is that it's a great service to use. They got me my passport renewal. They got me my second valid passport and they got me my Chinese visa. 
So they can get visas for various countries. They may be able to help you. So it's easy.com. I make no money from that, hopefully, but all I do is bring joy. Those guys are great. Great customer service, very process, very procedure, very a lot of integrity. And I would submit very reasonably priced for what they do. Good morning, Aztec. How are you, buddy? I was speaking about our little exchange earlier this morning uh, and the learning that I received from it. And uh, again, I apologize for my flippant response. It, uh, it was completely my fault, but uh, I will tell you that one of the reasons was the ingest I was taking from negative data from the media. And that uh, provided me with a, uh, with a platform to not be the guy I want to be. So anyway. Um, Met Tech, is Thanksgiving religious? Is it thanking their God? I'm still confused. But no, for the most part, it's, well, right now in the U.S., it's effectively like a great reason to have a holiday uh, and have a giant amount of sale of, of, of uh, up items. The day after thank Thanksgiving is always on a Thursday, and uh, the day after Thanksgiving is Friday. It's referred to Black Friday long before there was the Internet, but it's referred to as Black Friday because it is basically the day that people would do so much Christmas shopping uh, that any retail establishment would end up in the black after that day. There's now, you know, Cyber Monday, which is and then there's the whole week that is, you know, Black Friday week kind of thing. So it's a the origin of it supposedly comes from giving thanks for what you have. That's sort of the overarching thing. The, the ceremony that occurred, which is sort of the birth of it, was um, in near Plymouth, Massachusetts, effectively where the pilgrims first landed in the Mayflower from Europe, uh, from England, came over and had a settlement and they started there and then they interfaced with the locals. <laughs> And interface is very much in air quotes because they basically came over and said, OK, so we're like taking this land. You know, we have guns, right? <laughs> um, and they set up a village and that sort of thing. But the, the story goes is that in November, they sat down and they had this lovely meal uh, where both uh, cultures basically met at a table where there were, you know, they have pictures of Indians, you know, with like feathers in their head and. Uh, you know, wearing pelts. And then on the other side, that's on one side of the table. And then in the center of the table, there's, you know, because there's plenty of turkeys there. So there's turkeys, there's, you know, all this food, this amazing, you know, spread of food. And you give thanks on that day. So the way that we sort of, it's common to celebrate in the United States is that you give thanks for what you have in your life. And usually you do that with family. And that's done over a very large meal. Traditionally, turkey is very common for us to have on that day. Mashed potatoes, very, you know, sort of all of the American food you would think of with the exception of hamburgers and hot dogs. <laughs> um, pumpkin pie is very, you know, uh, symbols of turkeys. You will see like, you know, you know, how people like decorate their house around Christmas time and they'll, yes, they'll buy a tree, but they'll also have pictures of trees. So you get pictures of turkeys and pictures of, cornucopias basically which is a it's sort of a, a container right that is got like fruit and vegetables in it and that sort of thing um it's 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 it i don't know if it is any longer but for years because i haven't traveled on that day in years it was the busiest travel week um of the year or at least one of them meaning that many people because the kids would get out of school so many people would go home for for thanksgiving uh, to visit their families because essentially it's a long weekend, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Many businesses would close and many places would give you the holiday of Wednesday off the day before. So you'd end up with like this five day weekend. And um, so it's very common for younger people to go and visit their parents for Thanksgiving. Um, and that is really sort of what I would do. I would be very, very thankful. I mean, you guys, if you've watched enough of my videos, you know that for the most part, I focus on being thankful and being grateful. And again, I have my, you know, imperfect moments like I was talking about at the beginning of the broadcast. But. OK, it's OK, cool. It's almost done. I'm doing my laundry. So that's what I was listening for. Um, I'm like, wait a minute. What's all that white noise? Oh, my Buddha. What do we got going on here? Uh. Uh, looks like it's going to be a wet weekend. Yeah, my buddy tells me that. Uh, 
here. So don't know what we're going to do this weekend, but maybe we'll hang out. Um, but no, it is. So there can be a religious part to it if you are religious. Like it is sort of common either that Thursday or the following Sunday for people that pretty much don't go to church all year. They will occasionally do it at that time. It's not as sort of related to religious ceremony as, say, Easter is right in April. Um, but it's one of those deals where, you know, you get together with the family. So hopefully that helps. And indeed, hello, Aztec. Barangay, is that the Filipino word for village? Basically, yes. The province, your barangay. Ba, 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 ba. All the cool kids table saying yellow, which is awesome. Her Arizona. Spell checker capitalized God. I didn't notice before I said, uh, well, yeah, that's good. If you don't, so you see this symbol right here, right there. That is the symbol for my IT company, basically. And that is the company is called the Big Eye. And the reason the company was called the Big Eye years ago, and I have Big Eye Radio and I have Big Eye Hosting and I have this whole sort of ecosystem of Big Eye, right? Now, the reason it's the Big Eye, because like the word God, where G is supposed to be capitalized in general, that's sort of the agreement in many languages, it, the I in internet should always be capitalized, if you didn't know that. Uh, and so therefore, my company is the Big Eye. Cool, huh? <laughs> I think so. Aztec in the house. Um, can I pronounce it? <laughs> you can do whatever you want if you're willing to pay the consequences, Hike. Uh, F you, Mr. Mike. <laughs> Fair enough, my friend. Fair enough. I will have to rewind. That's ah, okay, dude. It's okay. Um. It was, again, remember how I mentioned yesterday? I'm like, I'm going to have to talk about that on my live stream tomorrow. It was a learning, I had a learning moment yesterday. And so therefore I want to thank you for being part of it. Hopefully it wasn't uh, disappointing. Hello, Damo. Good to see you, buddy. Hey, thanks for coming by the live stream that I did on Facebook actually the other day. That was really cool. Um, Oh, yeah, I meant to tell you, North Quincy's mascot, not a makeover. Oh, my God. I can't remember. Quincy, it's a city. It's a town right next to ours. And, um, yeah, because we're called the Harborman, okay? So if, like, there is anything remotely uh, bigotry-related or prejudice or, you know, uninclusive or something like that about Harborman, I'm like, oh, my God, that is going to take me forever. We have a girl here. Yeah, she's from my hometown, which is funny, right? Because usually the other girl that we have here is Missy, and she's also from my hometown. We literally grew up next to each other. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. And American football. Yeah, it's uh, that's a very true thing. Many people will watch. I believe it's college football on Thanksgiving Day. Is that is that true? Um, there you go, man. Right on. Good. I'm glad you hugged her. Hi, good for you, man. The native side of my family calls Thanksgiving the first American welfare line. Really? Is it because presumably they provided them with food? I'm not, I mean, I know you're like, you know, tongue in cheek, just joking around, but that's that's interesting. That is funny, actually. <laughs> so smooth, so smooth, baby. Absolutely. Hey, Kenneth, good to see you. Thank you for commenting without paying. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that you knew that that was not a requirement, my friend. It's good to see you again. Uh, hey, how you doing, Bill? I'm doing really, really well, buddy. Thanks a lot. Um, oh, so I realized I was going through channels, right? And so I went through yours and I went over to the Life with Bill thing. And I think the latest one was the one I'd already seen. Um, but I realized why. Uh, I haven't watched any of your live streams. They're usually at a time where I'm in bed <laughs> or I'm getting ready to go to sleep. Basically the way that I sort of end my days, um, are watching a show on, on Netflix. My current one, which I don't remember the name of because I'm really bad at remembering TV shows and movies and that sort of thing. Um, 
but Homeland, sorry, Homeland is the name of it. And uh, it's got like eight or nine seasons and I'm only in like season three or season four. And so I watched like two or three episodes of that sort of thing. And then as I'm falling asleep, then I fall asleep. And uh, so that usually starts my evening at about 9 p.m. or whatever. But um, good, mate. Love the format. of Yeah. Phil on POD. Yeah, he's pretty cool. Right? Same here. Same here. I need to watch more as well. As long as you feel bad, bro, that makes me feel even. <laughs> okay, so first of all, I don't feel bad. Bad is not a feeling. Uh, I feel blessed, actually, in all honesty, dude. And I know you're just like joking around. And I know that we were kind of just joking around, too. But first of all, I do appreciate what you did. And uh, but uh, but it was again, it was a learning moment for me. And that's and that never makes me feel bad, you know. Uh, because I also know that as far as I'm concerned, I like made my amends sort of thing. In other words, I said I was sorry and, and whatever, but I don't know. It's a neat process, really getting to know someone and having new friends. It's a difficult process to do when it's not face to face. I don't know if any of you guys would realize that. I mean, I like to think that we're sort of, we're certainly friendly and we're, we could probably label us here at the cool kids table as acquaintances. Um, some of us are building friendships, but, you know, I don't know if you'll believe this or not, but it really solidifies when there's the face to face, you know, like you can't get that. I mean, right now it's just me, right? It's sort of a monologue. I I know what very few of you look like, for example. Um, But it's like when that face to face occurs, it's amazing how much the sort of. I don't want to necessarily say quality, but certainly let's say the intensity of the friendship. And I don't mean that by, oh, my God, you know, we get it. No, it's more like um, maybe the validity of it. Like it really be, it really sort of transitions maybe in from acquaintanceship where we like sort of share the same desire to talk about things and and listen to things or whatever. Or maybe you're like, well, Mike talks about gratitude. So I'll cruise over to that channel. POD talks about life in the Philippines and how he's become wildly successful uh, at being who he is today. And it's like, well, I really like that. And I want to learn about. So anyway, it's um, it was a good learning moment, man. And I never learned a whole lot doing everything right the first time. That's for sure. Including friendships that I build. Hike says, is there, uh, is any of the Thai sports teams playing soccer? I do not believe so. However, I do not follow them. And uh, I can tell you that every Muay Thai, Muay Thai uh, facility that I've walked by has either been shut down or completely empty. They are not doing that right now. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up, please. And thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Ah, P.O.D., you're so cool. Hello, Ed. Thanks for coming by, buddy. Not much, man. I'm just kind of uh, waxing philosophically <laughs> in, you know, in a bucket of gratitude, which is nice. I'm done with my coffee. I may go grab a 100 here pretty soon, although it's 907. So it's after nine. So I can have one. Elbow bump. Yes, they call it that because the Europeans were starving to death until the native savage fed them. That is how the story goes. That is how the story goes. Yes. Um, I will debate that, but I understand that that is the, that is the folklore that many people don't really see the need to um, combat. I don't see, see the need to, you know, say what I said, which is anything negative about it. And that's fine. I mean, I grew up thinking that that was a really, really great scenario. And, you know, I also loved going to Plymouth Plantation. That was very educational, too, and very interesting. You are just using the trivial little detail called time zone as an excuse. Absolutely, Ed. That's what I got going on right now. It's just a hobby for me, bro. No biggie. Glad to hear you are well. I am well, Bill. And I'm I'm well because there are guys like you that we have a nice chat every time, no matter how short. So thanks, buddy. Uh, stuck in Florida. Do you have seminal answer? Meaning the the tribe versus the the city in Florida? Uh, Major League Baseball's on. Yeah, I wonder how many people are going. Demo says, uh, now some good news. Thank you very much. I just won a four-week challenge at the gym. Nice. Lost 9.7 kilos, 22 pounds for you Americans. Because <laughs> we, we're the only ones that still use feet and pounds. Ah, no, the British use feet. I think. Um, not bad for four weeks. Down 34 kilos or 75 Damo, I really honor you, man. And I know the guys in the Cool Kids table have already done that. I mean, I'm already, I'm only two or three minutes past in the uh in the comments but i'm quite certain many people have already acknowledged you and uh and that's huge dude that's really really huge i'm 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 so excited for you 
I'm thrilled for you. And I'm really honored that you shared that success with us here at the Cool Kids Table. Um, because I would submit that scenarios like that, successes like that, fuel other people to be able to do it. If nobody else ever got clean and sober before I did, I don't know if I'd be like, well, you know what? I need to get, I need to be the first guy to do. I don't care if no one's else. No, I mean, there's no manual. No one else is going to, I'm going to just make this impossible. If he can do it, I can. And I got to tell you guys, that's one of, I think, the more motivating things. Um, obviously, desperation <laughs> is also a pretty big motivating factor. Um, you know, as I've heard said, pain is the touch tone of spiritual growth. <laughs> Um, but, uh, but that's great, dude. Congratulations. That's absolutely, that's absolutely killer. Absolutely killer. Whoa. I just went to the, I saw that Sarah. Yeah. You're at about, you're at about 10, 10 right now. Yeah. Damn. Well, that's huge, right? Absolutely huge. I wish I could like give you some, I wish I could do super chats. Like, why can't I just click on one of you guys and be like, Hey dude, here's $10. Like go buy yourself you know, the world's greatest, uh, well, smoothie, if it's me, right? I mean, go buy yourself like a kale smoothie and celebrate. That's friggin' awesome. It's it's really huge, man. It's really huge. And here's what's great about it, Demo. And while I think that your success is going to be long-term, you know, based on my judgment, right? But the point is, is that if you do it the way you did it, I mean, if you starved yourself, basically like I did, I mean, the way that I needed to get into the motion is I needed to have, uh, I needed to get into ketosis which means I needed to have very limited calories, essentially no sugar, limited fat. And, uh, you know, to the point where my body was basically using itself for fuel because the fat that we store is the fuel that the body is like, well, you know, if there's ever a famine, I'm going to need this fat, you know, so I'm going to need it for to survive. And, um, and what's crazy is that we absolutely don't need any of this fat to survive. <laughs> so, uh, but it makes a great fuel during the ketosis process. And, um, you know, so I had to do that to get on track and I lost uh, just over 50 pounds uh, and then gained about uh, about 20 back. So I was like, down. I'm down 30. I'm at about 93 kilos right now. I weigh myself in the mornings. Um, I don't like to be I definitely don't prefer to be any heavier than I am right now. I would uh, prefer to be 89 kilos. I'm really, really comfortable at 89 kilos um, and long term. I know my knees will thank me, <laughs> uh, but also I have one of these faces that uh, like, you know how some people eat and they gain it in their stomach or they gain it in their butt or whatever. I gain it in my cheeks. <laughs> so if I eat ice cream, like basically it looks like I'm fat here and I can have like a flat stomach. It's, it's, it's very annoying, actually, because, of course, all of you guys, all you know is me from the from the from the tummy up. So you don't get to see uh, you don't get to see my six. Although, I mean, in, in camera, my tummy looks annoying. But yeah, absolutely, dude. You are freaking awesome. And uh, and I love the virtual hugs. That's so rad. That's awesome, Damo. Great job. You're an inspiration. Indeed, he is. I completely agree with that. Thank you for saying that, man. P.O.D. takes a lot of desire and discipline to do that. Indeed. Personal commitment. You know, after three, after three weeks, did you find it easier? Um, it's been my experience that anywhere from three to four weeks, if I and others that I've observed do things for three to four weeks, after that time, it just becomes like, okay, well, this is it's not necessarily habit, um, meaning the negative connotation that sometimes comes from the word habit. Um, but it really becomes, you know, like, okay, well, why wouldn't I do Like, I, I can tell you right now, when I lost all that weight, I really viewed the, few, the, the food that I would put into my body as fuel. And I was like, okay, would I seriously put like vinegar in the gas tank of my car? You know, no. Why am I putting cheeseburgers in my, why am I eating donuts? You know, and, uh, you know, it, it, this is the best vehicle I will ever have. I only get the one. <laughs> and, uh, you know, like, why have I ever smoked? Why have I ever eaten donuts? Why, why, why do I still eat donuts occasionally? You know, and, uh, but I did get in the habit of like saying that and I didn't eat badly for a long time. And then I got cravings and desires like humans do for various things. And uh, but the good news is, is that, you know, I, I like to keep the weight I'm at. I would really like to be at least 90. Sorry, at maximum 90 kilos or less. Um, I think I got told you guys the story where Gracie and I went to the Chocolate Hills Adventure Park, which is right in the middle of 
um, oh boy, not Cebu, maybe Cebu. I can't remember. It's it's in the middle of a very large island. Um, Tagbilaran is one of the main cities. So whatever island is that, that Tagbi, you could I could Google it. Anyway, right there. And uh, what they have, you know, zip lines, right? And there's a finite amount of weight that you can do on a zip line. Well, they have a bicycle zip line. So they have a top cable and a bottom cable. And the bottom cable, basically, if you were to take the wheels of a bicycle and remove the inner tube and remove the tire, there's, you know, like a little divot, right? Or, or there's like an, a, a kind of an opening. And it's got sides. And so you place that on top of the cable. And so you ride the bicycle across the cable. The cable holds you at the top. There is a very tight, you know, I mean, the cables are very tight to begin with for zip lines. But, you know, there's a there's an there's a attachment at the top. The frame is also attached to the bottom. So the wheels are riding on it. And it. but the point is, is that you cannot be over 90 kilos to go on this thing. And that was not an issue for Gracie. <laughs> But but for me, I mean, they weigh you when you get there and they wouldn't didn't weigh Gracie. It's pretty obvious, right? That she's not 90 kilos. But um, but I literally worked at not being over 90 kilos so that when I got there, you know, my weight would be. Oh, and when I got there, I had like two bo two water bottles in my cargo pants and I had my phone and stuff. And with all of that, I was like 94 kilos. But they said, well, it's not as long as you're below 95 kilos. And I'm like, that's cool. But on the website, it says 90 kilos. So it's a good motivating thing because it's just one of those like very pleasurable experiences that I had with Gracie that says to me, OK, well, like, you know, if I remain this weight or lighter, then my life is better. And it's not just because I like feel better. Potentially, I like how I look, you know, with clothes, whatever. Um, it's because Gracie and I got to participate in something that if I was any fatter, I basically wouldn't have been able to enjoy it with her. So that's pretty cool. And uh, uh, let me reply to this briefly. Uh, I know, but it's what we need. Gracie and I are going through paperwork for things, um, and it takes more money than we'd like. So, I mean, because free is ideal, right? And then like $10, whatever. But... Um, yeah, that's okay. Um, Asik says you have a trainer. You do. Hey, Rockman. Um, or are you just going and uh, cardioiding <laughs> your ass off in the gym? Yeah, that's a really good question. Like, I mean, what's, what's the motivation? Is it all internal? Um, big shout out, I, buddy, is quarantine. Bay, Ray, Po, Jom, Tien. You get water. I am unclear what that means, Kenneth. I'm really sorry. Buy yourself an ice cream. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and fries with that. Do you dunk the fries in your vanilla milkshake? I've done that before. Hey, back. How are you? Good, mate. Laugh out loud. Well, I'm going to shut down for the night, and I want to read some uh, manga before I go to sleep. Sounds good, Sarah. Thank you so much for coming by. I really appreciate it. I'm honored. Bring uh, bring some Hingham news next time you come. I always love hearing what's going on there from someone with a different set of eyes. And as you've noticed, Sarah, the Cool Kids Table welcomes you as well as wishes you well. Bon voyage. What's the difference between manga, hentai, and anime? Good question. I like the East Coast of Oz. Never got much further. Hmm, interesting. I've never been. I keep hearing about those people from people at work. Ah, okay, nice. Hentai. Mm, really? I wish losing weight was as easy as losing my keys. But um bum bum. Yeah. It's amazing actually how easy it is. Um sorry, how simple it is. It's just not easy. That's the point, right? It's simple. I mean, you know what to do. Do not intake more calories than your body needs to survive every day and so the human male usually is about 1500 calories depending upon weight of course and then uh, women are probably a little bit less than that by three to four hundred calories depending upon your age what you do physically and how much i mean if you're a downhill skier then you know 300 3000 calories is nothing you know you can eat five snickers bars a day and you just like bzz, you go through that in four runs but um but yeah, anything more than about 1500 calories is, you know, is, is excess for a lot of us. And so, again, that's the simple part. The easy part is it's not. 
it is not easy for me when I walk by a Burger King at an airport to be like, well, you know, I should eat here. You know, and it's not like it's a good deal financially. And the number of in, in that one meal, I'm having almost 2000 calories, depending upon what I have. They are, for the most part, the same. And nine times out of 10, the manga comes before the anime. Good to know. I don't know anything about that. I respect your will, Hugh. Hugh says to Damo, yes, indeed, sir. Jorgen lost 45 pounds in six weeks because of a liver problem. Feel a lot better now. Well, my friend, I mean, I'm glad that your liver problem is over. And uh, congratulations on losing that weight. I hope it wasn't painful. It's a great thing to have as a result, though, right? Um, indeed, I hope you are well as also. Thanks for saying that, Bill. Glad you made a rough time. Indeed, my friend. Demo reports he has a trainer. Yes, Mike, it has been habit forming in a good way. Very nice. For the last month, I have only had one day off from the gym. Easier every day to get there and the harder I work every day. That's so awesome, dude. I mean, it's good to hear because, I mean, that's what... Behold, thank you very much, Joe. I appreciate it. Yeah. So Chocolate Hills Adventure Park, where you can't be fat <laughs> uh, and ride the um, bicycle zip line. You can't be over... Well, I mean, again, I'm 6'2", right? So therefore, you know, if I was 6'7", then 90 kilos isn't really sort of, you know, too much. But my BMI was too high. That's for sure. It's illegal for us to go to the gym in Michigan because of the shutdown. Yeah, I know. There's a lot of... And it was here, too. Don't forget. I mean, the gym here was closed for months. Mm, two, probably. Uh, and then it was the social distancing and the spacing. But there was also the, the daily or the hourly, actually, initially closures. You could go in there, find out amount of people. They had spacing. You had to wear a mask. Sorry, you had to wear a mask to go in. Once you were in, I believe you took it off or could take it off. And then there was hand sanitizer everywhere. And then every hour, they would close it for 30 minutes because they would disinfect it and clean it and everything. And then they would allow people to go back in. But as is the case for many gyms and condo complexes, there rarely is a line to get in. Um, but I have seen uh, there's a gym that I pass by when I go to my meetings in Alva and Ekamai. And um, uh, it was closed for a long time. And so that must have been quite a financial disappointment for those guys, I'm sure. Hikes doesn't need to exercise more. The hikes I go on, I don't cover much ground. I spend more time stopping and taking videos than walking. Yeah, I mean, I get that too. It's like, you know, I mean, I, I walk more in Bangkok usually uh, because I'm going in back and forth to the BTS, which then only takes me, you know, so far. But I take the BTS so I can go somewhere so I can then from the BTS stop, I can walk. And the uh, amount of walking that I do when I'm on vacation, if you will, right, is on beaches sometimes, but usually it's flat. Uh, same with here. Same with here. It's flat. So there's a distance thing, which is helpful. I mean, again, I'm probably burning, you know, one, two, maybe three, 400 calories on some days, but um, usually when I'm on vacation, I run a motorbike, you know, and while I really do like to walk around, uh, Chompon is a great example is you really can't, I mean, if you want to just stay in the city and just kind of hang out there, then yeah, but for the most part, you need a motorbike. You need transportation. Well, for me, I needed because I needed to get to the beach. Now we needed a van to take us from. I mean, we could have taken a van directly from the airport directly to my first hotel, and there was beach there, and I walked on it, and it, and it was you know it was it was a nice update on beaches coming from Bangkok. But the other beaches I went to that were much larger. That was. Um, that was, you know, that was where I wanted to go. And that took a motorbike. Oh, in the Philippines, I was confused for a minute. Yeah. Goodbye. Good to see you, Robert. Thank you so much for coming by. I really appreciate it. Yeah, that's crazy. NH politicians love the power. And Sarah's out, which is very good. Goodbye, everyone in the chat. Have a great day. High five to stuck. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Another thread in your tapestry, Sarah. So going to Jollibee after a workout is not advisable. Um, well, you can go. <laughs> Eating their food is not advisable. Jollibee food is, I, I mean, I cannot, I've tried the hamburgers and I've tried the spaghetti. Spaghetti, the spaghetti sauce in general in the Philippines is way too sweet for me. They add a ton of sugar to it and I'm just not used to it and I don't prefer it. Um, the chicken the uh, fried chicken at, uh, at Jolly Bee is tolerable. I don't necessarily like it. I would much prefer KFC if I'm going to eat that item. Um, 
their hamburgers, I cannot. <laughs> they just taste so bad, in my opinion. The fries, I think, are lackluster and usually pretty wimpy. They don't have Christmas to it. So I am amazed when I, I mean, if you don't know, Jollibee actually bought a very successful coffee franchise in the United States. I want to say, um, I believe it's coffee bean and tea leaf that they bought. It could be Pete's, but I think it's coffee bean and tea leaf that they bought. And I was amazed when I saw that. I mean, of all, because I mean, in the US, if another US company buys a company there, you're like, okay, if a Canadian company were to buy us, you'd be like, okay, it's probably a merger. If a Chinese company buys us, it's like, okay, well, depending upon the vertical, depending upon the industry, that might be weird, but okay, I get it. Japanese company, okay, I understand why that might have happened. Thai company, that would be like, well, that's kind of odd. Same with the Philippine. You're like, wait, a Philippine company bought a U.S. company. I mean, my first impression was like, how in the world did they have the money is the first thing I was thinking about. And 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 why would they buy that brand of all things? But then I realized that they have those in the Philippines. They have coffee beans in the Philippines. I want to scroll all the way down because I want to make sure that I'm not saying the wrong company. I believe it's, I mean, you could Google it. You know, what coffee shop, Jolly Bee U.S.? But um, yeah, sure. Yeah, if it was if it was easy, everyone would be thin. Indeed, it is not easy. Um, and you know, just having the data doesn't mean anything, right? I mean, in other words, how many books are there on dieting and losing weight? But everyone's fat, you know. So speaking of Netflix, I really love the show Community. It takes place at a community college. Hilarious. Shelter in Community. All right. So frustrating. So frustrating. Uh oh. Yeah, I know. It's such a bummer. And I have pretty much determined why. Um, and I can't find updated drivers for it. It, it is my device, it is my current laptop. I like my Chromebook quite a bit. It's great for these because I just open up a browser and that's really all Chromebook is. Um, yeah, oh my God. I know. So that would be bad, right? Two of them. Because if one's good. <laughs> um, yeah, coffee, bean, and tea leaf. 350 million. Ow. That's actually a pretty good deal if you consider it. I mean, I, because it was, I mean, it, you know, it was, it's nationwide. There are a lot more on the West Coast for sure. Um, CBTL, as we like to say in, in California. But, uh, but yeah, that's, um, <laughs> so anyways, I know why this happens. It's my, it's my, it's the wireless radio inside of this. The device is, you know, inexpensive and uh i'm just too lazy really um although there's been other things that i've rather spend money on than getting a new laptop although i'm you know i've talked to you guys about this before i need a new laptop and i just need to go buy one so sorry for the pause sorry for the dead air fried chicken and gravy with rice is the only thing edible in my opinion but still not very good yeah i jolly b i'm i'm right there with you sorry my fellow premium friends i'm not a fan of jolly b kfc all day long i've you know, I got to tell I mean, Gracie likes KFC better. She likes the chicken at Jolly Bee, um, as do a lot of the kids in her family. Like when she takes the kids out to KFC or to um, to Jolly Bee, they I don't know about you, uh, Bill, but I really like Mang Inasol. And she takes the kids to Mang Inasol, like when her parents and her they go to a mall or something. The unlimited uh, rice. Is, is they, do they say unlimited? I can't remember how they label it. Is it like bottomless rice or whatever i think it might be unlimited rice but their chicken is actually pretty good i like how they grill it so if i can't go to philippines uh i'm trying kenny rogers roasters well they have those here in thailand just so you know um i'm trying to think where i was i was in 
Um, where was I? And I do. Oh, Phuket. I was in Phuket and I cruised uh, up north to. It was when I went to Bang Tao Beach and I was heading back home. Drove right by a Kenny Rogers Roasters. And I thought, you know, I should probably try one of these. But then I'm like, well, I'm not hungry. See, that's the thing with me is that like when I'm by myself, right, then I just eat whenever I want to eat. There's no like dinner time. OK, when Gracie and I are together, there's usually a dinner time and she will eat regularly, as I've mentioned before, in very small portions, which I think many of us will agree when the experts tell us you should eat, you know, regularly in small portions or whatever. And in any case, um, I will go hours, sometimes a day without eating because it, it, eating does not interest me at all. It is something I have to do. I would prefer to not to do it. And that's probably also one of the reasons why when I do do it, I'm just like, you know what? McDonald's, bam, six seconds in, out, done, bam. I consume this way too fast and I consume way too many calories. And then I move on and I don't eat for the next, you know, however long. So I, so I binge basically. Uh, and because of that, my body's like, well, the last time we ate was also 12 hours ago. We better hold on to this, right? Cause there might be a famine. And so therefore I've, uh, gotten into a bad habit again, because when I was, when I lost weight and when I continued to be slim, I was in the habit of eating regularly smaller meals, you know, and I, so I would have like, you know, two or 300 calories every like three to four hours and a lot of water. My body's like, okay, I'm used to this kind of thing, you know? So anyway, where do you, yeah, I think if one of you guys says, oh, no, he just does that. <laughs> he does this. Yeah, it's kind of a grat. It's it, and no, it's trust me. It's not. Yeah, that's true, though. Right. We do have generator tests. And uh, today's Friday, though. I, ha I don't you know, it's funny because I've been traveling and I go away on Mondays. Right. And I haven't I haven't been here for the generator test, which I miss. Actually, I, uh, <laughs> there's a part of my electrical engineering this that I actually really like. Indeed. Yeah, it was Jolly B. They were like, oh, his internet, we are going to hit him with a denial of service. It is over. Nescafe for me in the month, three in the morning. Me too, dude. I have my I had my Nescafe this morning. I do prefer uh, Mokona. Mokona Gold, I really like the best. But Nescafe is good, and we always have it here because it's what Gracie likes. Um, and she actually even mixes some milk in it in the morning. Jolly Bee planned a U.S. nationwide rollout across. Yeah, and so what's interesting is that the only place I've seen Jolly Bee in the United States is when I go to the Philippine uh, markets uh, to do my bollock buy-in shipping, <laughs> and there'll be them there. And I had I, I ate there. In fact, I had been home, and Gracie and I had, had we I think we had been together maybe two, maybe three years. And you know, so I took a picture. Hey, honey, look, I'm at Jolly Bee, right? And I had the hamburger, and it was gross. <laughs> I was like, ah, what a bummer. Is it cold in Thailand? You look frozen. Ha ha. Indeed. Yeah, thanks, Ed. I appreciate it, man. Jolly B. Uh, that was interesting, too. I can't remember when they did it. Did you? Oh, there we go. Yeah, July. July of last year. <clears throat> Googled it. No big whoop. All this talk about food. I can go for a nice blaze orange carrot and a glass of water right now. Oh, dude, I think you just need to, like, take a whole handful of kale and just toss that back, buddy. You like Jolly Bee? Has anyone ever told you you look like Dana White? Who, me? I don't know who that is. Should I Google it? Is it also when you guys say, uh, um, have you ever been on, what is it called? Fans only or something like that or only fans or something like that. And then I go to it and I realize that it's an inappropriate video streaming platform. Not a bad thing, by the way. Dana is one of the coolest guys. In my oh, <laughs> Thank you very much. That's cool. I'll definitely look for him. Then. A good friend of mine in town is named Dana. Actually, he and I will. He and I did a podcast together. You guys have maybe have seen that. I shared the link. I don't know if I copied it and threw it up on my channel, but um, I'll put it here in the chat if you guys want to watch. It was a really cool conversation. And uh, Dana is a good guy. He's also a, he's got an engineering background. He's got a telecom background and um Anyway, uh, D-A, whoa, what did I do just then? D-A-N-A, -A. oops, B-L. There we go. There's his channel, and he has not done a video. I believe if you go to his channel, 
yeah, I'm the last video he did, and that was like two months ago. But um, let me get the link. I'll share it with you guys here. He and I, uh, he had a really good chat. He's a really, he was a fun guy to hang out with. So speaking of cool Danas, and I'll throw this in the chat here. You guys can click on this if you so desire. I know I've shared it before in uh, in other social media, but if that interests you. Um, never heard of Kenny Rogers roasters or coffee bean and tea leaf figures. I would find out from a guy in Thailand. Yeah, I know. Absolutely. Right. You find out about stuff from the Philippines from a guy in Thailand. Crazy. Well, I've been there. And of course, Gracie's from there. DC, of course, just none of us say it out loud. <laughs> On a serious note, my wife and I want to visit Bangkok next year. Do we need a visa before entering the country? She might not because she's from the Philippines. Not sure about me. No. Neither of you need a need a uh, need a visa. Gracie can stay. Gracie, <laughs> your wife with a Philippine passport, she can stay thirty days, um, and then for nineteen hundred baht. Then again, this is based on you being able to get in with all of the other things you need to do. Like if you tried to get in right now, the first thing you got to do is go to the Thai consulate and request um, uh, a letter of uh, entrance, a certificate of entry that you can actually get in. So. Yeah, and indeed, and he brings up a good point. All of this, all of the data that I just gave you, as well as some of the guys here at the Cool Kids table, um, is uh, pre-COVID, right? So, I mean, because you couldn't get in right now, they wouldn't give you a thirty-day visa exam stamp. Dana White, president of the Ultimate Fighting Championship. My God, <laughs> you do look similar. Good vibes. Oh, okay, cool. Mickey D's in the U.S. is gross. Fast food is a race to the bottom. That's a great point. Fast food race to the bottom. Oh, and then I throw that up there, which is cool. Great channel, by the way. Dana is a really easy guy to watch. Listen to. Oh, cool. Comes off as a real genuine character. Dude, that's cool. I, I will have to uh, I'll have to Google him big time. That will be very cool. I'm um, I'm 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 looking outdoors and I'm seeing the same level of clouds, which is cool. So I'm guessing it's not going to be, although my buddy David, who's just basically lives across the street, if you will, in the sense that he lives across Sukhumvit and down a stop. Um, she explained later. What is it? Uh, oh, hold on. Uh, stand by. I got to make sure that she has everything she needs for this. Um, uh, well, I may have to go. I need to deal with this, you guys. Anyway, um, this is important. <laughs> it involves our future. So therefore, with that, I will say to you guys, um, thank you so much. And, uh, and I hope you have an amazing day. It's Mike from LiveMyAssOff.com. And I am going to go take care of something that is going to be wildly successful. How's that? So anyway. Uh, they, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. He does have a really good channel. Anyway, with that, you guys, thank you so much for listening. Have an amazing day. Thank you for hanging out with me in my morning. And uh, with that, I will talk to you soon. Ciao.